Curses have been around for thousands of years and are often blamed for tragic events as their sole purpose is to cause harm or even death to those who they have been summoned upon. Nowadays, we often associate them with witches who will cast them to those who do them wrong. But this isn't always the case, as oftentimes people can be cursed by moving or touching objects such as old artifacts or even taking items from a haunted home. Now, whether you believe in them or not, there have been a number of misfortunes and even fatalities that can be traced back and linked to some kind of curse or action that could have invoked one. Whether it's all just coincidence and speculation, or whether there is some truth behind curses is up to you to decide. So from a cauldron used by one of the most infamous serial killers to store and possibly cook human remains in his house, to Europe's oldest mummy that seems to have been responsible for many deaths after it was discovered, here are five cursed and haunted items from around the world. Hit the lights, sit back and enjoy. The Cursed Grimoire What better way to start a cursed items video than talking about a grimoire? A grimoire is the name given to a textbook of magic that provides instructions on how to create talesmans as well as perform magical spells and summon supernatural entities such as angels, spirits and demons. They are very rare, so in a few days before Halloween in 2013, two handwritten spiral bound grimoires came up for sale they created a lot of interest and were sold for over $13,000. But they came with a warning. On the opening page was this message. To those not of this craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution and you will surely suffer at the hands of this craft. The same warning was written again using the ancient alphabet called Theban, which is a magical text of unknown origin that is thought to only be understood by true believers of witchcraft. The author of the book had also signed her name using the Theban alphabet. But what's even more interesting is that tradition states that the original witch should have the grimoire burned after their death in order to keep her magic spells and identity a secret. If this really was written by a witch, then for this book to come up for sale was almost unheard of. It turns out it was written by a witch in the 1960s who was a high priestess of Wicca and the grimoires had somehow been acquired by a lady whose husband worked for occultist Alistair Crowley. The first of the books contained hundreds of years worth of Wicca knowledge passed down from her mother and other generations of high priestesses, and the second includes recipes, cures and ceremonial perfumes. Both books, depending on your beliefs of witchcraft, could be very powerful and even dangerous in the wrong hands. So who bought them? While well, it's not known, but the company who acquired them and sold them in the first place said this. The spell books or grimoires to give them the correct Wiccan name are particularly interesting as they are cursed. We have not heard from the buyer since the purchase, and that could be good or bad. To think that someone actually paid over $13,000 and has since not been in contact makes you wonder what exactly they are using the books for. I just want to ask, I've heard a few interesting stories about witchcraft and wanted to know if any of you believe witchcraft is real and people can cast spells and such, or do you think it's all make-believe? The Curse of Utsi in 1991, the frozen body of Utzi the Iceman was discovered in the Uztel Alps on the Italian border. He was thought to have died over 5,300 years ago and this Bronze Age man was a remarkable and exciting find. Not only was he the oldest natural human mummy in Europe, but also gave researchers an insight into Europeans of that time period. But following the bizarre circumstances surrounding those who discovered Utzi made many believe disturbing him was not a good idea. One by one, those who discovered and examined his remains were struck with bad luck. Rainer Henn, the forensic pathologist who examined Utzi, died in a car accident a year later. Kurt Fritz, the guide who led Henn to the body and brushed the snow off of Utzi to reveal his face, died in an avalanche shortly after. Rainer Holtz, a filmmaker who made a documentary about the recovery of Utzi, died of a brain tumour. Helmut Simon, who first discovered the body, died from a fall while hiking in 2004 and one of his friends, who was part of the rescue team who found him, died of a heart attack hours after Simon's funeral. Conrad Splinder, who led the scientific team that recovered and examined Utzi's body, died of MS, and Tom Loy, a molecule archaeologist who discovered human blood on Utzi's weapons and clothing, passed away of a blood disease. All of these people died pretty young and were all relatively healthy beforehand, so is it just a coincidence or is Utzi's mummy cursed? While many believe the curse has done its damage on those who first disturbed the body, as he is currently held in a refrigerated room in a museum in Italy, and attracts over 300,000 visitors a year who have never had any bad experiences linked to their visits. 
But it's pretty crazy, all of the people who passed away after discovering Utsi. The Cursed Mobile Number In 2010, something very unusual took place. Mobitel, a Bulgarian mobile phone provider, withdrew a cell number. The number was 0888888888 and was suspended after every single person who had been issued with it died unexpectedly, leading the company to believe it was cursed and would bring bad fortune to those who were given it. In total, three people were killed who had this phone number. First was the head of the phone provider, Vladimir Grashnov, who passed away from cancer in 2001 that was suspected to have been caused by radioactive poisoning. He was just 48 years old. Then the number was assigned to Bulgarian mafia boss Konstantin Dimitrov, who had built up a 50 million drug smuggling empire. In 2003, he was out dining in Amsterdam when a gunman assassinated him in front of diners. He was just 33 years old at the time and had his phone in his pocket. After this, the number was assigned to one more person, businessman and drug trafficker Konstantin Dishliev, and he too was assassinated two years later outside of a restaurant with the phone in his pocket. This was the final straw, and the mobile provider kept the number dormant for a while before Mobitel decided it was too risky to issue it again, and withdrew it indefinitely. It's crazy to say that the number was the reasoning for these people's death, but it's the only number in the world that every owner of it had died. And for that reason alone, superstition or not, Mobitel were not taking any chances. Thomas Busby's Chair The Busby Stoop Inn, located in North Yorkshire, England, has long had a reputation as being one of the most haunted places in the area, more specifically, being the home to a haunted and said to be cursed chair. Let's go back over 300 years ago, when the pub was home to a heavy drinking, petty criminal called Thomas Busby. It was well known that Thomas had a favourite chair in the pub and would shout to anyone who dared to sit in it. While in 1702, he had an argument with his father-in-law, Daniel Orty, who was his partner in crime, and Daniel taunted Busby by sitting in his favourite chair. Thomas ordered him to leave the pub and followed him back to his farmhouse where he bludgeoned him to death with a hammer before hiding his body in the nearby woods. It wasn't long before he was arrested and sentenced to death by hanging. However, as he was being led to the gallows, he cursed at onlookers warning them that if they ever sat in his chair, they would die a horrible death. He was then hanged in a makeshift gallow just across the road from the pub, and his body was left on display for several days. Since then, there have been a number of deaths that are believed to be associated with the chair. The first was a chimney sweep who sat on it during his break and just a few minutes after returning to work, fell to his death from the roof of the pub. Then, most notably, a group of World War II Air Force officers who took turns to sit in the chair, did not return home from the war, and many blamed their taunting of Thomas by sitting in his chair as the cause. Then in 1967, two RAF pilots stopped by the pub and were dared by locals to sit in the chair. As they travelled home that evening, they lost control of their car, hit a tree, and were both killed. Other reported deaths were a cleaning lady who tripped on her mop and landed in the chair, that later died of a brain tumour, and a delivery man who also sat in the chair and crashed his van later that day. The landlord decided enough was enough and moved the chair into the basement, where it remained for several years, until a builder was called in to do some work and sat there during his break. Later that day, he apparently fell to his death. This was the final straw. The landlord contacted a local museum in England and asked them if they would take the chair. They agreed and it was put on public display where it hangs six feet off the floor just in case someone is tempted to sit in it. So is it all just a coincidence or exaggerated tales that have been passed down over the years? Or is Thomas Busby a man of his word? Ed Gein's Cauldron The name Ed Gein is known by most. He was an American serial killer and body snatcher who lived in Wisconsin and was convicted of murdering two women and exhuming countless bodies from the local graveyards, which he would go on to use for many disturbing things in his house. Speaking of his house, it was an eerie place just outside of Plainfield and when police broke in in 1957, suspecting Gein was responsible for the disappearance of local shop owner Bernice Warden, the local community could not believe what Gein had been up to in there. Inside were items made from human skin and body parts, such as lampshades, chairs and even jewellery. Gein was eventually convicted for his crimes, considered legally insane, and spent the rest of his life in a psychiatric institution where he died in 1984. But going back to when he was first arrested, his house was burnt down shortly after, with most of the possessions being lost, sold, or destroyed by police. One such item that was sold was a cauldron that was later acquired by a local man called Dan McIntyre, whose grandmother had purchased it from the sale of Gein's belongings many years ago and used it as a plant pot. 
It was some years after he acquired it that a neighbour of McIntyre noticed it in his garage and immediately recognised it as the blood-encrusted cauldron that he had seen when assisting police with the cleanup of Dean's house back in 1957. At the time, the cauldron was nestled between tubs and barrels and also rotting remains. After finding out it was most likely used by Gein to store or possibly even cook human organs, although it's not known if Ed ate any of the victims or bodies he dug up, McIntyre decided to sell it, thinking it would be great for a collector of such items. However, after removing it from the garage, he began to feel uneasy and described feeling dizzy and anxious. Then shortly after, he suffered from a mysterious illness and electrical items in his house started to malfunction, along with other bizarre happenings that he linked to the day he moved Edgeen's cauldron. McIntyre became convinced it had dark energy and by moving it, he released what had been lying dormant for many years. He believed the cauldron represented the evil that happened all those years ago and all of the horror that happened inside Ed's home. The cauldron went to auction in February 2015 and was sold for an undisclosed figure to Ghost Adventures investigator and haunted collector Zach Bagans, who is displaying it in his macabre museum in Las Vegas.